If we take the general objectives, the Soviet program and the American program have much in common. And this is due to the fact that scientific problems relating to the study of space, relating to space flight, are international matters, and they are debated at various scientific conferences. What we observe in the American space program is very interesting, because from the purely scientific point of view, the programs are identical. And this is quite natural, because scientists do tend to think alike. But in the process of solving this or that specific problem, you can follow different roads. I think that, generally speaking, the very idea of a race is harmful, because, after all, all these experiments are so serious and so complicated that they have to be so reliably prepared that any kind of haste for the sake of a race causes nothing but harm, which can only injure science. Space research is a problem that requires very great financial appropriation and very great effort. If you were to try and collect all the requirements and requests of scientists and try to put them into effect, the cost of all the necessary experiments would grow into mammoth proportions, which would be quite inconceivable, even for such powerful states as the Soviet Union or the United States. What could prove to be difficult for one country, from the point of view of cost, would be easier to achieve if, let's say, two countries were to pool their resources so that, in principle, we are in favor of that kind of cooperation. But in order to organize that kind of joint effort, two conditions are required. That is, complete mutual confidence, that's the first condition. And secondly, genuine friendship. This kind of cooperation is possible. But it would be, I guess, hard to do that at the moment, because there is still in the world today a mutual distrust in particular, mistrust in regard to various international actions of the United States. This cannot but be taken into account. If all these unpleasant things could be removed, then a very useful cooperation could be developed between the Soviet Union and the United States in the space field. Will astronauts and cosmonauts ever fly together? Not likely, not as far ahead as we can see. But more cooperation could come. As General Kamanian suggested, the space powers could divide up areas of research, cutting expensive duplication. What could bring it about, paradoxically, is concern over the costs on both sides. Meanwhile, the space probes, American and Soviet, are off perished on the test flight of Soyuz, a third generation of manned spacecraft. He is not forgotten. Inside the Kremlin, one of the activities of a number of the cosmonauts, a session of the Supreme Soviet, the country's parliamentary body. It's not a full-time occupation, but it takes time going to the meetings, listening to the reports, and meeting the voters. This gate separates everyday Russia from the world of the cosmonauts. We are only 20 miles from the center of Moscow near the town of Chkalovskaya, an area off-limits to foreigners. This is the main street of Star Village, the home of the cosmonaut. Sprawling to the left is an expanse of birch trees providing a roomy, fresh air setting for this least typical of Russian villages. We are told Star Village was founded in 1960, that it now has a population of about 1,200. This would include cosmonauts, future cosmonauts, technicians, and their families, including the inevitable grandmothers who look after the children. In this vast park are new 11-story apartment houses with 66 apartments in each building. By Soviet standards, they are sumptuous. In a roomy four-room apartment with a view lives cosmonaut Alexei Leonov and his family. Tea time for Leonov and his six-year-old daughter, Victoria. Mrs. Svetlana Leonov keeps busy with Victoria and a baby less than a year old. She also goes to an institute in Moscow studying philology. 
Their family reunions are rare. Hmm? Each apartment has a trophy case. The cosmonauts have no trouble filling theirs with mementos of their travels on Earth and in space. In the same building, in an apartment identically laid out, live cosmonauts Andrea Nikolaev, Valentina Tereshkova, and their daughter Alyona, now three years old. The child is of historic and scientific interest. She's the first ever born of a mother and father who had both traveled in space. She's not only perfectly normal, she's brighter than average and learning how to print her name. <laughs> Valentina Tereshkova was studying for her engineering exams. We asked whether there would be more Soviet women in space. There is a group of women in the cosmonaut detachment. They're all studying and training for new space flights. There are bound to be long space flights in the future, which will take well over a month. And on board a spacecraft of that sort, there are bound to be women. Well, after all, just imagine that if there are no women on board a spacecraft, which has to fly for as long as that, there will be complete disorder on board. With only men there. Five-year-old Valery Bukovsky, Jr., the son of cosmonaut number five, is escorted to kindergarten by his mother. Like many of the Star Village children we met, he's particularly apt at winter sports. Our village, as we call it, is very new. And we have here a store where we can buy the smaller things we need and any bigger things we can buy in Moscow. Also, we have a kind of traveling store that comes along from time to time where we can buy the more important things we need. For our children, we have a kindergarten on the territory of our village. It's situated in a very beautiful locality, surrounded by pine trees and birch trees, so the children can spend a lot of time outside in the fresh air. Alexei Leonov wanted to be an artist before he wanted to fly. This is the view I saw flying over the Earth in the spacecraft. From the night side of the Earth, as I was passing into the daylight. The sun is hidden somewhere beyond the horizon, and the sun's rays pass through the atmosphere and create a very original halo. Red, orange, blue, and then dark blue. The next painting here is what a man would see if he were to fly around the moon. You can see the moon, the earth, and the sun. Before my flight, I had my eyesight tested for color on Earth, and I made similar tests in space. 